Item. Ms. Taja Thomas, Counsel for the Department. Sarah Harvey, DHHS. Michael Brooks, I represent the mother, Pamela Foote. Pamela. Pamela Foote, mother. Thank you. Welcome. Anything by way of opening? No. Your Honor, would you let me in the Zoom room? I'm going to try and share a video eventually sure. as a piece of evidence. Thank you. Anything uh, other than that for preliminaries? I have visited the children face to face uh, as I'm required, and um, things are going well. The needs are met in family placement. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Thomas. Um, thank you, Honor. I would like to call Ms. Cam Pamela Foot to the stand. Ms. Foot, come out to our Good morning, Ms. Foot. Good morning. Um, how would you like me to address you today? Ms. Foot. Ms. Foot, okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Foot, you are for your children. Michael, Madison, Haley, Ashley, Tori, Jack, and Tyler. Okay. And um, how old are all of your children? Michael is 14, Madison is 13, Haley is 8, Ashley is 6, Tyler is 4, Tori is 2, Jack is 1. You are familiar that CPS has been involved in, in your life, I guess, since about August. Are you aware of that? Correct. Um, to the best of your knowledge, can you explain why they became involved? Because Michael kicked Victoria down. Okay. And then I called the cops. Were there any other concerns that were brought to your attention about why they were involved? Um, after they came and investigated the house, they said the house was trash. Um, that is the only thing I know. Okay. And have you had a child removed from your care before? Yes, ma'am. And did were you ordered uh, were ordered into a case service plan? For that case? Yes. Yes. Um, and do you recall what case, or what services you participated in during that case, the previous one? Families first, we did Cat Hancock, um, counseling, that's all I remember off the top of my head. Do you remember if you had like supervised parenting or a parenting coach or someone to assist in like housekeeping stuff or anything like that? Um, we had Linda Edwards that did the parenting time until we were unsupervised. Was the condition of your home a concern at that point in time with your prior case? I don't honestly remember. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to stop your share just for now. Thank you. But it I does work. that to happen. Yes, so far. Thank you. Thank you. So the record should reflect, because um, I forget we're doing an audio recording as well. Uh, Ms. X is getting ready for her uh, presentation, and she uh, shared, I think, it, uh, the, the video it didn't start playing, but the video itself came up on our, our uh, <clears throat> Zoom screen. Which is Thank you. And actually, Your Honor, with Ms. Heiss, Ms. Heiss is also going to assist me today. Um, and I just want to lay, I guess, some foundation for that video. Ms. Heiss, if you can share your screen. Okay. Uh, Ms. Foote, can you see the screen? Okay. Yep. Okay. And can you tell us what you are, what we're looking at? That would be the lit. That was the living room. Okay. And this is the living room of your home? Yes. Okay. Do you recall when this video might have been? That is the day that Michael picked Victoria. Um, to the best of your knowledge, was that on or about August 5th of this year? Somewhere close to then, yes. Okay. And... Um, this is the day that Michael picked Victoria. Ms. Hayes, can you can you play the video so we can see? Would you 
Is that um, video a reflection of what it was like in your home, kind of on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I was on a pick line, yes. But, I'm sorry, but you were on a what? Pick line. And what is that? That would have been the thing about Yay Big that was sticking out of my arm and the bandage on my arm in the video. So, uh, I'm sorry, pick line. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was getting antibiotics for an infection. And maybe we didn't see the video. At some point, you then took it out, though, to get up. Is that correct? I took the IV line off okay. so that I could move. 
<clears throat> and um, your son Michael's behaviors, is that something that you had been receiving services to help understand how to address and manage? Yes. And at one point he says, it's locked, I can't get out and jump out of my window. Are those, can you help us understand how the house is like locked up or that he couldn't leave? Um, CPS in the past cases when he was somewhere between three and five, bought us double key deadbolts. And every house we have moved into, we have replaced them on the doors so that he cannot get out and just go running in the middle of the night. It requires a key to get in and out. And um, during this last investigation or involvement with CPS, were there any concerns about safety concerns that were brought to your attention regarding that practice? With Tori's case or this last one just now? I, I guess our current one. Um, they said it wasn't safe and I said we are following CPS requirements that we have been given in the past. And you said that was when Michael was about three? Correct. And he's 14 now? Correct. Okay. So for 11 years? Yes. And did CPS um, tell you to put locks on your windows? I have locks on the windows, yes, ma'am. <laughs> are there locks on each, like on the bedroom doors <clears throat> as well? Um, yes. <clears throat> Do you see any safety concerns with that? Um, the fact that the two-year-old can now lock the doors, yes. Do you see any safety concerns with the condition of the home uh, that was shown on the video? Yes. And what are the safety concerns? Um, there's a lot of things on the floor. There's a lot of things out of place. Is that generally what your home looks like, though? No, ma'am, not when I am not on antibiotics and able to actually be up and doing things. So under normal day, uh, help us understand what your house looks like. Who's helping take care of the children? Where are they at? What's going on? Um, they were at daycare while I was in and out of the hospital on a daily basis, except for the day in question because they were puking and um, they could not therefore go to daycare because they were sick. Um, they had been at daycare, well, Aaron works the whole entire time I had been sick. Or are we talking when I'm not sick? Just generally. So, I mean, are you sick often? No, I've been sick since June. Okay. And so, so if we're talking from June on, yes. And so how were the children being disciplined or redirected or cared for? Since June? Yes. They had been at daycare, so I was not having to have a hand in that. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. That room that we saw a video of, is that your living room? Yes, sir. Could you give us a rough idea of what the dimensions of that room are? I have no idea. Well, is it smaller than the room we're in now, the courtroom? A little bit. And how many young children are in there? Seven. Now, that in and of itself, does it pose any problem to you? That's an awful lot of kids. It's a lot of messes that get made very quickly, and it's harder to get them cleaned up as quickly as some might want them done. Now, I noticed all during the majority of this video, 
You were lying on a couch, right? Yes, sir. Why were you lying on a couch? Because I had a pick line in my arm and I was recuperating from a hysterectomy that had gone south and I ended up with infections in my stomach. And when was this video taken? And the video was August around the 7th, I think they said. 2023? Yes, sir. All right. Does your house, your living room look like that today? I have no idea. The uh, the ring cameras were taken down after I left the home. Who took them down? I have no idea. Now, looking at that video, and I don't personally know what goes on with your family, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm really trying to find it. It would appear that the main issue was that significantly older boy. Is that Michael? Yes, sir. He seemed to be tearing around like a bull in a china shop. Yes, sir. He's almost as big as you are. Yes, sir. And obviously was very violent, wasn't he? Yes, sir. That video shows him I guess it was a shoe, hitting you with a shoe? Yes, sir. And then there was something going on off screen that I couldn't tell, but it didn't sound pleasant. What was going on? Um, I was attempting to keep him in the house per his probation. Was he resisting? Yes. What is the age of the next oldest child in your household? 13. Is that that young lady I saw running around uh, looking at her kids, looking at the kids? Yes, sir, it is. Is she afflicted in a similar way as her son, as her brother? Excuse me. No, Your Honor. Or, no. All right. If I may, and if you know. Is there, are there emotional issues associated with the 14-year-old boy? Yes, there are. What are they? He has autism and he has uh, ODD. He has anxiety. He has depression. He has... Those are the ones I can remember off the top of my head. Is the behavior that we saw demonstrated unusual for him? No, sir, it's not. What methods have been taught to you to deal with his conditions? Well, um, putting him in his own space to calm down, taking him, taking him away from the other kids. Um, that's the biggest one that we've been working on is keeping him away from the other kids. Based on the video I just saw, it looks like these kids and you are packed in like sardines. Have I gotten a misperception of it? No, you have not. So is there a place that young man can go where he can have his own space? His bedroom. Who, who sleeps in that bedroom? He does. By himself? Yes, you're on. Or yes, I'm, sir. I'm Mike. Okay, <laughs> let's make this easy. Does he remain in his bedroom much? No. Must be out with everybody else. Yes. Because I don't know, I've got to ask this question, which on its face sounds offensive. But is the boy developmentally disabled? In other words, is he does he have a normally functioning IQ? Yes, he does. All right. So the behavior that we saw is more a function of this autism? Yes, sir. Is he on medication? Yes, he is. Do you see to it he takes it regularly? When I was in the home, I was, yes. What is the medication? 
Um, I would have to pull it up on. It's unpronounceable. Got it. There are multiple medications that he is on. And to give you a correct list, I would have to pull it up off of the U of M's website. I understand. And does he have a specialist who he's? Yes. From U of M. Um, he sees some from U of M and he sees two other providers that are not a part of U of M. And, uh, until you left the home or were ordered out of the home, uh, who took care of getting them to these providers? I did. Were you and the young man in regular contact with these providers? Yes. How often would you say you had to go there? Um, we went and saw Cat Hancock once a week. We went and... Where did she practice? Here in Adrian. Okay. And we went and did ACPC was a phone call once a month or every two weeks. Um, the providers at the U of M were usually video... And the other provider that we saw was for his autism testing, and that was up in Ann Arbor. And how often would you see the Ann Arbor autism specialist? Um, that one we go for testing when the primary care would recommend that we go. Roughly over the 14 years, how often has that been? Um, we have only gone to see them twice. The first time he did not complete testing, the second time he did. I may have asked this question. If I did, I'm, I'm sorry. But do other, any other of your seven children display these issues? Not as extreme, but I have two other children that have been diagnosed with autism. What are their ages? Six and four. Now, your son, Michael, appears to be the central theme of the chaos that we all observed here. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Absent Michael, what is the scene? Would that scene look like? Calm. Would you say that what we saw in that video in terms of the condition of the room was normal or was it affected by the fact that you were currently quite ill? That I was quite ill. It's the nature of these hearings that I have to get rather personal with you. You understand? Yep. You had had a hysterectomy. Yes, sir. How long before this video did that happen? Around two months. And you were still, it looked like bedridden. Correct. You've been bedridden much of that time between the time of the procedure and the time the video was made? The entire time. Is that a normal thing to happen with a hysterectomy? That no, it was the infection afterwards. Thus the need for the quote-unquote pick, P-I-C-K or P-I-C line? P-I-C... I believe. Oh. Are you still on a pick line? No, sir. They took that out in like a month and a half after that video was taken. So you were on a steady regimen of antibiotics for over three months. Yes, sir. Are you suffering from the Still suffering from the after effects of this infection? Yes, sir. Are you disabled at this point? No, sir. Frankly, looking at seven kids looks like an endless ocean of work to me. Okay. Are you physically and emotionally capable of dealing with this tremendous burden? Physically, no, I'm not capable yet, but emotionally, I can handle it. Another hard question for you. If Michael was removed from the scene, would it be easier? Yes. 
frankly, he looks stronger than you on that video. Am I am I right or wrong? You are correct. So if he wants to go out the door and he's willing to focus on doing that, you couldn't stop him, could you? No, sir. He does do that, doesn't he? Yes, sir. That's why they had us put double key box on the door. Those have been there for 11 years. Correct. Initially at the request of the DHHS? Yes. And they've been useful ever since? Yes, sir. What kind of problems has the boy gotten? I can see what kind of problem he is in the home. What kind of problems has he got into outside the home? He's running from school. He has threatened violence at school. He has thrown rocks at sticks um, at principals, at administrative, uh, administrative staff at the schools. He has threatened cops. He has... I've heard enough. And it's pretty consistent? Yes. To your knowledge, it's going on to this day? Yes. Is he one of the reasons that you're here today in this environment? I believe so, yes. Absent his presence in the home with the remaining six children, what do you think life would be like? A lot calmer, a lot cleaner, a lot more able to be a stable environment because we're not having to focus 90% of our time on him and everybody else would have more of our time. Have you ever asked the DHHS or any of their service providers to look into that sort of remedy? No, I have not. Are you now? Yes. What do you feel is your portion of the responsibility for the chaos that we observed? I should have put my foot down and forced my husband to stay home from work. How much time does he, well, historically, how much time did he spend taking care of these kids? None. Even after work? Then he'd take care of Michael if I asked him to, but it was I had to ask. It wasn't an automatic, he did. So Michael would be the focus of your husband after work if you ask him. Correct. And the other six? Were still my responsibility. I mean, there are, except for your daughter, who is, as I understand, is 13. They're all little kids, aren't they? Yes, sir. What level of care do they require for their safety and security? Um, the younger three, you have to watch pretty close. Most, if you go to the bathroom, you need to have something either on TV or make sure the 13 year old does not have her phone so she can keep an eye on them uh, while you use the restroom. Because if you do not, you have no idea what the three youngest will get into. This six-year-old and the eight-year-old are pretty good about picking up their toys when they're done. Not always, but usually they are pretty good about it. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate yourself as a parent? Out of five. If you could raise six and Michael was set, put in a different setting, how effective do you think you could be? An eight. As I understand it, these seven children are now under the care of your husband. Is that right? Are you the father? Maybe you're yeah. not married. I don't know. Are you or aren't you? We are still married. You're married. All right. All seven kids are under the care of your, your husband, right? Correct. Does he still have a job? As far as I know, yes. And what are the hours of that job? 
8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday, if his hours have not changed. Does he, as a habit, up before you guys were forcibly split, uh, does he have a habit of coming home after work pretty quickly? Yes. So what are these kids doing now? that he's continuing to work and you're no longer in the home? Can I went up to hearsay? This Do one is know? not in the home to be able to testify to that? Well, let me <laughs> lay a foundation. Do you know firsthand what the arrangements not, are? Not firsthand, no. You understand that the allegations of abuse and neglect are focused on you, don't you? Yes. What... Do you think that's a reasonable accusation to lay on your head? No, not when I had medical documentation saying I wasn't supposed to even be left home with him. Well, if this court were to order Michael out of the home and you back into the home, what do you think the situation would be? A lot less stress. A lot less having to focus all time on just one kid, being able to focus on all of the rest of the children equally instead of having 90% of your time focused on the one misbehaving. In that video we saw, that's exactly what was going on, wasn't it? 90, in fact, I would say 100% was focused on that young man, wasn't it? Yes, sir. That's pretty typical. Not the behavior, kicking the baby. But the dominance yes. presence. What would you like to see the court do here today? Put me back in the home with the rest of the six kids, the ones that I can handle. What is your if you if maybe you haven't talked to your husband? I don't know, but are you two from your perspective still together? There's a lot that needs to be worked on for me to say we are fully still together. All right. Are you, I don't remember, are you two prohibited from even speaking to each other? Not that I'm aware of. Do you speak to each other? I try to have conversation with him. He does not usually answer very well, but I try. If you know. Would you describe the suitability of your husband to raise these seven children? I do not know. Does he have any impairments? Not that I'm aware of. Is there anything else you'd like this court to know? Not at the present moment. Thank you. That's all. Yes, thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to share the screen again for the video, if I may. <clears throat> Miss Foote, you can see this video? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't think my pointer is pointing. Um, up in the, uh, about the middle of the uh, film is a, oh, I knew that was going to happen to me. In this, uh, there's a TV. Do you see that? Yes. Under the TV, there's a cage. Is that for what? The three dogs. So you have three dogs that aren't inside in this video. Is that true? I don't know if they're inside or outside in the video. I can't tell you. Okay. So in this video, you're laying on the lower left, correct? On a couch? Correct. You're covered with a blanket? Correct. Jack is must be in your arms. Correct. Okay. And uh, <laughs> over on the right, there is a child whose back we can see that looks white. Who is that? That's Victoria. Um, up on the couch, the oh. little girl sitting on... Uh, the piggy tails. I don't. That's either Ashley or Haley. Okay. And uh, there are feet coming out her back, which tells us that she's sitting on top of someone. Do you agree? That would be what it looks like. Yeah. Oh. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Let me just just uh, refer to your memory on this. That day, what's going on? Um, all seven children are in one room where you are, correct? Correct. You had eyes on all of them. Correct. The children don't normally play in their bedrooms. Is that true? True. So this is the area where life happens during a day. 
Correct. On this day, the none of the children were out of the home for any reason. Correct. So out of view, there's a kitchen and dining room, correct? Correct. But it's all kind of one big room. Right. So in this area is where the children do their developing, do their playing right here in this room that we see. Yep. Um, did you see Michael, okay, Tori? I did not. I watched the video afterwards. Okay. I knew from what Maddie said what he had done. Why didn't you get up and check her? Because I could not. You got up later? I did, after I had my medication and my system working. So when you got up later, why didn't you check her? Because I was dealing with Michael first. But when did you finally check on Tori? As uh, soon as Michael jumped out the window. Who did take care of Tori? Madison. This is a normal situation where you are in charge of seven children in this environment, correct? Correct. With whom do you have a relationship to help you? Who helps you? Meaning? You said that you are sick and that you've been ill often. So is this the scene often, or does someone come in to help you? Usually they were at daycare. Right. But when they're not, because you're ill often, they are I'm ill often. I'm going to object to the repeated claim of often. She had an infection that was chronic and now appears to be improving. That's not often. That's one time. It's her words that she testified to, to today. Um, but also, um, I can lay that foundation. I think uh, the objections are proposed. You'll have the opportunity to cross examine to clarify if you wish. <clears throat> you take care of lots of medical issues on a daily basis for the children and for yourself, don't you? Yes. So you, you give everybody their meds, including your own? Correct. Um, and you have a sugar problem, as I remember, correct? Diabetes? Or correct. So you have like an insulin pump. Correct. And uh, that has to be monitored. Your life depends on it, really. Correct. So, and you've had other illnesses. Um, would you disagree that you're ill often? I would. I'm not ill often. I have diabetes. I have anxiety, but that's not ill. Okay. Um, and uh, since June, though, the hysterectomy and then the infections, there was a period where you were ill. There was. So when the children need to be home, as we saw on the camera, because they were sick, is that what was Correct. going on? What are your resources to help on a day like that? Um, um, that day I didn't have any. I usually call Candy and Dre, but they were busy and could not assist. Okay. So generally on a day that where everybody is home like that, and uh, the father was at work, correct? Correct. And you're in charge. And if Tori had broken her neck and was laying there, how would you have known that she needed help? She was laying on the floor when she bounced right back up and kept going. She wasn't hurt. Um, why are the cameras in your house anyway? CPS from previous cases. Who at CPS? I do not remember the CPS worker that had us install them. I do not remember. Um, since this video was taken, um, did Victoria get medical help? She was evaluated and they said there was nothing wrong with her. So if you were home today and the kids were home, what would be different? I would not keep the kids home until I am over the rest of this bout that I'm still having with being on antibiotics every other week for infection in my stomach. I would not put myself in that situation again. What's the difference in what you just said and being not prepared to parent your kids today? not being prepared to parent my kids. I can parent my kids as long as I'm not on antibiotics and high pain medication. 
which you are right now. I am. So you're not ready to parent your kids. Correct. Thank you. Nothing further. Can you redirect? No, Your Honor. Um. <clears throat> Actually, it was recrossed. But... <laughs> <laughs> I figured Ms. Thomas would let us know if she has questions. Yeah, no, Your Honor. Thank you for your testimony. You may return to your seat. Anyone else you'd like us to hear from, Ms. Thomas? I mean, I will take testimony from Mr. Harvey very briefly. Ms. Harvey, um, can you state your full name for the record, please? Sarah Harvey. And where do you work? DHHS. And what is your role at DHHS? Um, currently a CPS investigator. And was that your uh, role in place of employment on or about August 5th of 2023? Yes. And how did you become familiar with this matter? Um, I was assigned to a referral which came in um, that involved the Ford family. And so as a CPS investigator, can you help us understand what your role is once you receive a referral? Yep. The allegations came in um, and on the same day that I received them, I went to the home um, to do a visit uh, from there. I did various um, investigation, safety planning, family team meetings, um, services. Part of your investigation, did you review any um, prior CPS or um, documents that might be in a shared system? Yes, I went through the complete um, case history for the family. And what did you discover in uh, your investigation process there? Um, there had been um, multiple, both confirmed and not confirmed allegations in the I'm past. I'm going to object any reference to non-confirmed allegations. This is an adjudication hearing and the testimony must be competent. Uh, Your Honor, this is a, a, an employee of an agency in which she is sharing what her investigation process was um, and what she discovered. I'm not sure. Um, why that would not be appropriate for her to testify to. So it doesn't necessarily go to the truth of the matter asserted, but rather to show us why she acted the way she acted. Correct, Your Honor. For those reasons, the objection is overruled. Um, and I also had previous knowledge of an open foster care case uh, after a removal. Um, I discovered that um, on July 17th, I believe, um, on or about uh, that one child was returned back to the home. So I noticed that it was um, within 30 days of that return back to the home, uh, which caused uh, a bit more concern. So I wanted to make sure that I got there on the same day that I received the allegations. When you, when you went to the home, what did you observe? Um, Pam answered the, the door. Um, I had told her that the technical victim on my case when it originally came in was Victoria. Um, all of the children were present except for Victoria. Um, Pam showed me that Victoria was in her room. As we walked through the house, um, it is a small space. Um, there are a lot of things, but I imagine it does take a lot to parents seven children. You're going to have a lot of um, food storage, things like that. Um, but the home was in complete disarray. There were actual... Um, Madison, I believe, told me that they were sorting trash, but there were garbage bags um, open all over the floor um, that you had to walk over to get to the bedrooms. Um, the counters were completely covered. Um, there was a drawer, a cabinet drawer um, out on top of the counter, which had um, sharp objects, I believe uh, a box cutter maybe, um, or something sharp of that type um, was on top of the table. Um, when we got to Victoria's room, uh, Pam went to turn the uh, knob and the door was locked and she had to ask why the door was locked and Madison said that she had locked it when uh, Tori went to take her nap. She Pamela couldn't find her own keys to unlock the door, so Madison had to bring the keys at that time. Uh, and I visualized uh, Victoria sleeping in her bed. Um. <clears throat> Did you take photos of that? Yes, I took a few photos of that. You know what I mean? I approach. Yes, you may. Ms. Harvey, I'm handing you a pack of papers, I guess, and there's a couple photos on each page. Is this reflective of the um, of what you saw that day? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, Your Honor, if I may, 
The court accepts these photos um, as petitioner's exhibit two, I guess the video is being number one. No objection. I don't have a copy of those. If Ms. Harvey can, yes. I was like, I don't know. Mr. Brooks, have you looked at these? Uh, no, I have fine. Yeah. All right, have, uh, if you would please show those to Mr. Brooks so he can decide if he has any objections before I have a look at them. The papers are just moved, yeah. <clears throat> I have no objection. Any objections to the court accepting the video as evidence? I have no objection. No. Very well. Uh, we'll need you to supply a copy of that digital release for the file for purposes of appeals in the event that you have no and this is received uh, one, two, three pages, a virtual of five pictures for exhibit two. Um, as an investigator, sometimes I'm like, are homes always, homes that you see, are they always pristine? Absolutely not. And do you always file a petition when homes are not pristine? No. What was the biggest concern for you in this matter? Um, in regards to the home? In general, I guess. Um, for your multiple safety issues in the home. What were those safety issues? Oh, safety issues can start with the um, the home itself. Um, you have two very small children that are crawling around, walking around, putting things in their mouths. Um, the home had um, dead bugs in the corners of the kitchen. Um, there were obviously the, the um, garbage bags had been open all over onto the floor. The small children were walking through that. Um, I'm unsure if there were sharp objects in those garbage bags um, or quite what they were. Uh, safety concerns regarding the locking of uh, Victoria in her room at that time. Um, the fact that Miss Foote didn't know that Victoria was locked in her room. If there had been a fire, um, it's concerning that um, we wouldn't have had a key to find to get her out of that room. Um, the, I discovered the double lock on the front door um, later into the investigation, after we had the video, I inquired why. I inquired with Michael why he didn't go out the door, um, and he told me about that lock. That's also concerning um, that a family is locked inside their home again. If there were a fire and emergency, and people need to get out, um, it, it's a concern. Um, there were concerns with Miss um, Foote's ability to react to what, in my opinion, was an emergency type situation when um, Victoria was kicked by Michael. That was also a safety concern at that time. And were you able to have a, a meeting to discuss these concerns with the family? Yes, we had um, a large family team meeting, um, which included support people that uh, they had requested um, be present. We put in um, a good solid safety plan for Michael at that time. Um, so that he was not unsupervised by an adult other other than Miss Foote, so that Miss Foote could focus on her children um, at that time, and Michael would have someone else being his primary supervisor. And um, so, your investigation started on August fifth, and I believe the initial petition wasn't filed until September, early September. Is that correct? That's correct. So, in that month, what was happening? I guess was um, did that city plan work? We, we were using the safety plan. We did have one incident, however, during the safety plan um, in which Michael and Aaron had picked up Michael from his supervisors, his after school supervisor's home. Um, and when they got home, uh, Miss Foote had some things that she wanted Michael to do. Michael said he wanted to do his homework and cook with dad. Um, Aaron agreed that that was what Michael was going to do because they had already decided what they were, a plan of action, so to speak. Miss um, Foote insisted that Michael continue to do what she had asked him to do that agitated Michael. Um, it resulted in a chase around the house. Um, Michael was trying to go to his room to separate himself and she stood in the doorway and didn't allow him to do that. He went to the basement to try to separate himself. She chased him down to the basement. Um, this also involved another child, another one of the children who followed her down. Um, and Mikey ended up leaving the home. Um, I don't, I, to be honest, I don't remember whether he went out a window. I believe he went out his bedroom window um, and Mr. Foote went after him. Um, and back to the safety concerns, was there, were there also concerns about the children just sort of being even unattended or neglected while she was in the home? Oh, uh, yes, there are concerns with um, the one of, at least, at least one of the children, I believe three, um, had indicated that they had 
there was an incident in which the children were burned. Um, one of the children indicated that the oven number on the oven said 495. So the oven was at 495 degrees. They were attempting to bake something um, at that time. And two of the children were burned uh, when asked where their mom was at the time. They said that she was in her bedroom on her phone. It, did you see any burn marks on the children? No, um, both or all the children that I talked to indicated that this had happened um, in the past. Okay. Um, and in your investigation, referring back to that prior CPS or the foster care case, did the, were there any assessments or evaluations that were provided to the family? Yes, all of the children, uh, with the exception of Victoria, I believe, um, received, and Jack, because Jack was not um, at an age where that could happen. Um, they received a CTAC, um, so a trauma assessment, an intense trauma assessment. And do you recall what those trauma assessments uh, recommended for the parents to do? Um, there were numerous recommendations. Um, during our family team meeting, we went through each individual CTAC and did go through the things that um, the family had been working on because there were some things that they had been working on. But aside from Michael, um, none of the other children had, a, had worked on any of their trauma or any of the major concerns that the CTAC showed. And you heard Ms. Foote's testimony today, correct? Yes. And as it relates to Michael, I'm, her testimony reflects that he's really sort of the problem child, and kind of maybe, but always has been. They've had these doors, these locks in their doors for, I don't know, 13 years or so, um, or 11 years? I believe she's dating 11. Okay. Um, is that what you discovered in your investigation too, that it's really just this one oldest child that's really creating all this havoc in the home? No. Um, yes, he has behavioral issues. Um, but there, there are things that compile to create those issues. Um, we did have, with other supervisors of Michael, there are much far fewer incidents. Um, other children in the home also have um, concerns. One of them is uh, diagnosed with adjustment disorder, um, and it was indicated in a doctor's appointment um, by Ms. Foote that she has behavioral issues. Um, they're, they're, it's not just a one-child issue in this home. In your opinion, um, what would Ms. Foote's uh, testimony is that she was really unable to physically get up and tend to that situation because she was really sick. Um, and in your opinion, why is that not sufficient to stop this petition from going forward? Um, mostly because she, she recognizes that she was not physically capable, capable on that day to care for her children, and yet made the decision on multiple days, not just this one, but multiple days, um, on the day that I came to her home, all of her children were there and she was there alone caring for all of them. Um, she continued to make that decision to care for them despite um, having the illness that she had. Um, the illness that she had did not stop her from getting up when she was hit with a shoe to chase after Michael. Um, the illness, it, as far as she, she stated that she unplugged an IV, um, she could have unplugged that IV and tended to Victoria at that time. Um, I just, I don't believe that this is an isolated incident of non-response. I believe that this is more than one. I object. This is speculative testimony based not on any factual information. Right, Your Honor, the question was, why was uh, Ms. Foote's version of the story not enough to stop the petition? And so this is not for the truth of the matter asserted, but simply for uh, her opinion as to uh, why she continued to file the petition. You can speculate anything you want in favor of whatever position you want to take. There are no facts to support her speculation that this was a normal, typical reaction to similar situations because they don't have the information. It's pure, unsupported speculation. I think she can offer her <clears throat> opinion in addition to um, the existence of the demonstration uh, as described by Ms. Thomas, there is also the fact that we rely on Ms. Hovey and people also in her position to give us those opinions uh, on whether or not uh, safe parenting is occurring in the community. So for those reasons, I will rule the objection. You may uh, finish your answer. 
Um, I, I do understand and uh, have empathy for the fact that uh, there were not very many other resources available. Um, she mentioned two resources uh, that she could have called that happened to be busy that day. Um, there could be other resources in her life uh, which would be available, family members, et cetera, but those aren't an option for her. Um, without those family ties, those things to assist her if, in these types of circumstances, that you, we would continue with the safety concerns in the home. Jane Terry's investigator, did you uh, work with natural supports to ensure that um, if Ms. Foot were removed from the home, the children would have all the support and Mr. Foot would have all the support that they needed? Yes, numerous natural supports are available to Mr. Foot. And um, I want you to take a look at the courtroom right now. Um, can you tell me, and, and for the record, describe the people that you see here? Um, in the natural support right, um, people for Aaron are his brother, his sister, his parents, his aunt, his uncle, um, his other sister, and then other family, friends, and supportive people that he has in his life. And all of these individuals, um, since you've created the same, or since you've been the investigator, um, have continued to support this family. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you mentioned that these people are not available to Miss Foot. Um, and why, I guess, what is your opinion? What do you know about that? Um, my past experience with the family, as well as uh, past CPS investigations, um, show a pattern of, uh, I guess I would call it alienation, um, of the family from Mr. Foot's family. Um, there have been multiple incidents. If Mr. Foot's family does not agree with something that uh, Miss Foot, uh, an opinion that she has for an action, um, they just tend to be cut off from the family and there's not much communication. And this is also verified through the children. Thank you. <clears throat> I have no further questions, Your Honor. Cross examination, Mr. Brooks. Was Michael there the day you first showed up? Yes, I believe he was. You've seen the video along with the rest of us. From your investigation, is that sort of situation involving that young man common in that household? I wouldn't say common. Um, the physical assault part, I would not say common. However, the um, the agitation back and forth between Miss Foot and Michael, I would say that is very common. Um, Michael was sitting, doing something, and he has identified that uh, raising a voice to him um, very loudly and abruptly is a trigger. And the video shows that he was sitting quietly, um, Miss Foot then um, in a loud voice says, Michael, you need to pick up all of the toys. Um, that immediately agitates him. And from there, that continues, that agitation continues. It doesn't, there's no supportive moments to help calm him. He himself is asking multiple times to be calmed in different ways. Um, and she's denying him those abilities. Do you believe, or do you have any reason to believe that if Michael wasn't there, that entire scenario would be calmer? I believe that the scenario which revolved around Michael's kicking up Victoria mm -hmm. and the subsequent action would be calmer. However, you still had um, one child yelling, move over, I'm going to sit on your head. Another child blatantly sitting on top of another child hitting them. Um, there was still chaos in the home. At least with the brief period that we were able to view the private lives of this family, would you agree with me that virtually all of the attention was focused on the 14-year-old? Yes, but I believe that that's also a choice to focus all of that attention on them. I don't understand a choice. Meaning, meaning there was no action to focus attention on Victoria, who had just been kicked across the room. There could have been action to focus on that. There could have been action to focus on the child who was um, sitting on another child's head. Well, now, to say she was kicked across the room, don't you agree with me? That's gross exaggeration. I, I actually don't agree. And she did travel quite a distance. Oh, she didn't. But never mind. Um. You support the idea of my client being kept out of the home, don't you? At this time, yes. Why? Um, I believe that Ms. Foote needs to work on some, some of her own issues. She needs to acknowledge issues that she brings to the table. Um, I don't believe that she's in a place to see negative 
Therefore, she can't correct the negative. What sort of path do you see she should take to improve the situation with respect to her own behaviors? Um, I know that currently there are services being offered through um, Ms. Bernie Moore. I think that that is imperative and that those are done and um, all of her effort is put into that. I think that there are other services um, that an ongoing worker can speak to uh, to talk about what's uh, currently being offered and what she's moving through right now. Um, but I think we definitely need to follow um, trauma screen suggestions. We need to work on her own trauma. We need to work on the parenting classes and the issues um, that brought us here. Is that being followed through by A, the department, and B, my client? I actually would not be the person to speak to the, the current status of those services. Um, the ongoing worker would have more information on that. I didn't hear the last part of the The ongoing answer. worker would have more information on that. And who is that? Chelsea Grant. Is she an actual DHHS employee? Yes. Good. So you don't know whether or not these programs have been in, well, you can't because there hasn't been an adjudication yet, so I withdraw the question. I have nothing further. Yes. Uh, nice. Uh, did Tori eventually get looked at by a physician? Yes, we asked Pam to take her, and she did. The petition says she failed to take her for medical evaluation following the incident. That's correct. She didn't until we had a family team meeting and I asked her directly to take her. How long was the lapse between the incident and when she got treated for or observed medically? The incident was on the third. Um, I believe that we had the family team meeting on the eighth or the ninth. So it would have been about a week. Um, do you agree that the mother's uh, response to Tori's assault was inappropriate? Yes. Um, who did you see observe in the video anyone that did take care of uh, Tori? Um, Madison did. Uh, actually, Michael put her on the couch. Michael picked her up off of the floor and put her on the couch. So he is actually the first person who cared for her. Um, and then Madison sat next to her. And then there were several children there on the couch with Madison. Is that correct? That's correct. I believe all the Jack. Is that a role that Madison often takes? Yes. Can you tell me something about that? Um, Madison is often asked to um, assist, especially um, in instances like that day when Miss um, Foote was not feeling well. Miss um, Foote will even agree that Madison um, helps out by lifting children into car seats, by putting children in uh, their beds, by putting children up into high chair, um, getting them if they want a snack, she assists with that. Um, on the day that I went to the home, she was assisting with multiple things. She had put Tori down for her nap that day. And that child does home school from home, doesn't she? She did at the time. She, um, we received the investigation just before the new school year started, and this, the children are now attending public schools. Thank you. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Hey, you raise your hand? No, Your Honor. I have one question. Go ahead. Is the 14-year-old now living in the same home? with the child that we have the video of him kicking, quote, across the room? Yes. Is that wise? We have had no further incidents with him involving his siblings, to my knowledge. Is that, is that similar to the saying that every dog is entitled to his first bite? I wouldn't, exactly. I mean, don't you agree with me that if Michael kicked that child across the room, a helpless two-year-old that he shouldn't be given the opportunity to do what he can um he actually faced um i guess i can say he faced some juvenile charges and had some consequences from that um and we have safety plans in place to help protect all of the children from incidents like that okay nothing for you anything else no no your honor thank you for your testimony your next witness. I have no further witnesses, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks. No, we have no further witnesses, Your Honor. Yes, no witnesses. Thank you. Closings. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, today the burden is on the petitioner, which would be the department, to prove by preponderance of the evidence um, that <clears throat> a statutory drum alleged in our petition is true. Uh, as it relates to the children, they are all under the age of 18 and their mother, Ms. Foote, is the one who's legally responsible for their care. There might be question or an argument that she was unable to provide care for them at this time. And my argument is that she was able to do so. 
We saw her get up and chase after Michael when she was hit, as Ms. Harvey also testified and noted. Um, but now when Victoria was kicked down, in her testimony, she said she didn't see it. And then she contradicted it, contradicted it by saying that Victoria got up and went about her day. Um, and actually, the child did not get up and go about her day. She cried and was kicked up on the couch. And that is where she stayed uh, for that video clip. Um, with that, she neglected to provide proper medical or other care necessary for that child's physical well-being. Um, and then also the child's escalated behaviors, we saw that in, in that video. And Ms. Foote's response was um, so escalated that we see the other children running towards the situation, screaming mommy. Um, it, it's a very chaotic scene. All of those things in the presence of the children do pose a substantial risk of harm to their physical and emotional well-being. This is also happening while a 13 year old girl is attempting to assist. Um, and the youngest children are still not being intended to, especially the one who was kicked pretty aggressively and thankfully was not harmed, um, although it did take a week to confirm that. All this is occurring in a home that is limited in space um, and that is exacerbated by clutter and filth. Um, and for those children, that is really uns unsafe because they're just becoming mobile. <clears throat> and we are looking at the conditions at the time the petition was filed. That might have changed since then, um, but at that time it was true. The home environment with Ms. Foote is an unfit place for the children, and we are still requesting that she remain out of that home because of the neglect to their well being and to the environment itself. Um, Ms. Foote had reported that she was in this medical condition for two months at the time that this video occurred, uh, from June to at least August. And today we see the plethora of financial supports that this family has, and she easily could have reached out to them. Um, and but for her own behaviors or her own inability to have those relationships, they were not available to her or to the children. And these children face that risk of harm. Um, for those reasons, we believe that we have met our burden in proving by preponderance of the evidence that MCL 712A.2, subsection B, subsection and subparagraph one and two are also met. Thank you. Well, I think it would be useful and practical if we were using one standard for each of the situations, the one my client finds herself in and the one her husband finds himself in. And what I'm talking about is my client with an IV in her arm has been criticized all morning here for not getting up, removing the IV and immediately rendering aid to her two-year-old child that the 14-year-old had just kicked, quote, across the room. Number one, I think I've made it pretty clear. I think that's a gross exaggeration of what took place. But number two, now, where does that 14-year-old live? In the same house with the two-year-old that we have seen the video of him kicking across the room. We're talking about a boy who has apparently been formally diagnosed with mental issues, which are not, frankly, very easily treatable if they're treatable at all. But now we have safety measures in quote, a place. My client doesn't get the second bite of the, like the proverbial dog. Happened once out of the blue, she's a bad parent. If it happens again, what are we talking about? Bad DHS? I don't know. There are seven kids in this cramped space. The mom is sick. The mom is taking chronic IV fluids or, or antibiotic fluids to try to cure this infection with seven little kids. Well, six little Five little kids and two teenagers. Good luck. The house is not safe. The house is not safe because it's cluttered. There was an old lady who lived in a shoe. She had so many kids, she didn't know what to do. I think that fits the case we got right in front of us. She's human. She's sick. She needs help. She'll tell you she needs help. There are locks on the door, which make it a safety issue. Where did those locks come from? Who taught her to do that? The DHHS. 
Why do we have locks on the door? Because even after this little short video we saw, that 14-year-old who is bigger and stronger than his mother, who attacked him physically, climbed out a window. There's a reason those locks are in place. How do I know he doesn't take that same shoe he hit his mother with and hit some of his younger siblings with it? I don't know. Ms. Harvey was allowed to speculate about what normal life in that place is. I'm going to speculate that kid is physically violent with his younger siblings, which he's now again allowed to live with. It's two different standards. If DHS says, go ahead and give it a try, it's okay. If it happens spontaneously while my client's laying on the couch with an IV in her arm, she's a bad mother. My observation of the short vignette we saw is you got to do something with that 14 year old who is a bull in a china shop. That's what we really saw. Taking full advantage of the fact that his mother is sick. My understanding is he has had problems since, but nobody testified to that. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. Something's got to be done about that boy and laying the blame for the chaos and the problems strictly at the feet of the mother is a gross exaggeration, such as kicking a child across the room, which the court could clearly see is not true. I need to pick that up. I already picked it up once. <laughs> and the fact that there's all this chaos with seven little kids in that confined space. Uh, my opinion is the woman needs help. She admits she needs help. My opinion is a 14-year-old bull in a china shop needs to be removed from the scene in some fashion or another that will allow this woman to do what she needs to do. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. The um, respondent has admitted that she's not ready to parent the children today. I don't know that we need to do much more, but the dad has been adjudicated in the past. Um, Michael is not a bull in a China shop, he's a child. And you know the resources we put into uh, working through his issues and making sure which part of his issues are nature and which part are nurture. Because if you take Michael out of the household, if, if, if we hadn't taken mom out, if you take Michael out, then um, you haven't solved the dysfunctional parenting in the nurture. And I don't know what chaos is coming next, but we heard that Madison has been parentified, that we've heard uh, you saw the video of the children who are going through a daily uh, experience where there's violence in their environment. We know because it has been scientifically proven that when a child is in the environment where there is domestic violence, there is um, trauma, uh, their bodies um, exert, uh, excrete uh, hormones and uh, their body goes on crisis mode and they go to fight and flight. These little children are so used to it that you almost can't even tell that there's a crisis in the home. I'd ask you to consider that the agency has exercised cultural competence. They're not here today to say a messy home equals a bad parent. That's not what they're saying. And this is a very messy home, I, I, even dirty. Uh, they aren't saying that the choice to have a lot of children is inappropriate. You can have children, your body makes them and you take care of them, the dad is working. Um, they're not saying that um, poverty or uh, a small house is reason enough to remove children. What they're saying is that you add mental dysfunction in the middle of that and it can't work. So until, um, until mother who has so many strengths, you know, you remember that we've had this case open for a long time. This person is intelligent. She has so many strengths that would benefit these children. And this is a case for unification. But if she does not change, the children will remain at risk of harm. And that is the end of the story. There are family members who are capable of helping. They're helping now. They have, uh, uh, we need to have mom build a relationship with those people. And I'll, she has to change. She has to be willing to change. The resources are there. In addition to her strengths, she needs to uh, make some changes where the children will remain at risk. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> 
this. <coughs> also to make sure that everybody can hear me and we can make a good record. The court finds that all interest parties were given notice for purposes of today's hearing. This was originally scheduled for jury trial, Mr. Brooks. Um, and then there was a bench conference, and I understood that there was potentially a plea, but then here we are with our bench trial. I never represented there was a plea. A jury trial? No, I never I never asked for a jury trial. Either. Okay. I just wanted to double check on that point. Uh, so thank you for clarifying that. But clearly, everyone was ready for trial today. He was able to hear from everyone who's been involved with the family. And thank you, everyone who is involved uh, for coming. Uh, when the court looks at whether or not there's been a violation of the statute, it's a, it's a preponderance of the evidence standard that's been <coughs> implemented for purposes of the analysis. The statutory uh, sections that I'm asked to consider are those that were cited by Ms. Thomas, MCL 712812B1 and 2, the first is whether or not this parent, uh, although able to do so, has neglected or refused to provide proper or necessary support, education, medical, surgical, or other care necessary for his or her health, morals, or is deprived of emotional well-being, or is uh, abandoned, which doesn't apply here, uh, or otherwise leaves the child without proper uh, custody. The uh, section two is uh, whether a parent's home or environment environment by reason of neglect, cruelty, drunkenness, criminality, or depravity on part of the parent is an unfit place for the juvenile to live in. <clears throat> As I look at the petition, uh, many of the allegations have been substantiated and we did also have Ms. Wood herself tell us that she's not physically capable of taking care of the children at this time. Uh, she told us that she did have that chronic infection. She was using uh, a pick line as she uh, described it during the period of time under which we saw the video, which of course uh, was the event that triggered uh, the second petition. Um, and that she continues to this day about every other week, I think she described it as uh, having uh, infections and need for antibiotics. So there's a physical uh, barrier in place for her to be able to care for the children at this time. Uh, and then there's also uh, the litany of other issues that were testified to by uh, Ms. Harvey uh, and in part admitted to by also by uh, Ms. Foote as it relates to the conditions of the home. Uh, the court could uh, view the conditions of the living room at the time of that particular incident that was uh, shown today. And it's clearly a very cluttered environment. Uh, but frankly, I kept counting the children to make sure that they were all uh, still in the frame. Uh, and it was, it's very difficult for, uh, for me to see even from that perspective, how it would be possible to keep track of uh, such an amount of children in such a short period of time. Uh, I also saw uh, firsthand uh, the oldest daughter of this couple springing into action and being lied on by her siblings, uh, which is part of the regular pattern that's been described uh, by her as well as by Ms. Harvey. I was, of course, the judge that oversaw the first petition, wherein the youngest child was at uh, his issue for medical neglect. And at the tail end of that petition, there were a litany of services that were supposed to be in place for all the children, including those trauma services and some counseling uh, things. Uh, and as Ms. Harvey uh, testified, which was consistent with the uh, petition, that none of those services were in place. Uh, Ms. Foote asked us to give her some grace based on her physical condition. Uh, but as Ms. Heiss uh, and Ms. Harvey pointed out, and Ms. Thomas, I think, uh, there are a litany of family members uh, that are able and willing to step into the gap to assist. Um, I think it's safe to say that their hesitation uh, has much to do with Ms. Foote's um, refusal to reach out and refusal to uh, request that assistance. Uh, she was the home at the outset of the case. For those reasons, on an emergent basis, and the children were placed with their father where they uh, continued to reside. So this really isn't a case about removal uh, per se, because the children are with a parent who was adjudicated, by the way. Uh, as a result of effectively him uh, also letting those services go by the wayside. And he also uh, testified and told us about the dynamics that were in the household that stood in the way of that, uh, which are clearly demonstrated. I don't rely necessarily on that, but I rely on the conditions that were found at the time of the investigation by Ms. Harvey to say that I think that there has been a violation of the statute under section one and section two that would uh, require the court to take jurisdiction not only over the children but over his foot for purposes of services in the name of reunification. Those specific allegations uh, that I see that were shown to be uh, true by proponents of the evidence or more today were the lack of supervision and uh, parenting skills utilized uh, for the special needs child Michael, 
um, that pattern of, of violence between the parent and the child uh, is certainly not one that uh, should be in place, given uh, that we've already had a litany of services. That child is also subject to the juvenile provision of this court under the delinquency docket. I am familiar with that child in that case and um, the parenting skills that are necessary uh, to parent him. Uh, and the demonstration that I saw today uh, further supports that Ms. Foote is not engaged in those services and has no use for those services, at least at the time the petition was filed. That's going to be absolutely necessary to help uh, that oldest child uh, to understand and regulate his own behavior so that he can function. Of course, that demonstrated also the concern uh, for the youngest child who was due to an assault by that child. Um, and then there was a resulting, or an ensuing, I should say, um, chase around the house, which resulted in Michael jumping out the window, all of the children following and screaming at their mother, the other ones, uh, doors being locked, windows being locked. We don't know which ones are locked and which ones are unlocked. And that's a pattern too, because not only was it in the video, uh, we have at least in one other instance, uh, witnessed personally by Ms. Harvey when she went to do her visit, uh, wherein there was uh, an issue where uh, Mr. Foote had stepped in to try to parent, try to make some decisions for Michael and work with him. And Ms. Foote actively interfered with that. And what resulted was another chaser in the house and the child fleeing. So this is clearly a pattern uh, that the other children, this child is subject to, as well as uh, the other one's being witnessed to on a regular basis, which is certainly traumatizing. And we had seen uh, some indications of that in the first petition, which is why the children were offered many other services, even though they weren't subject to that petition, none of which were in place at this time, uh, which means that uh, the court must get involved again uh, to implement those services for these children to mitigate the risk to their mental health. Uh, uh, we heard some testimony that there are already some attachment issues with at least one other child, that oldest daughter, historically has rheumatoid arthritis, uh, should not be uh, being parentified, uh, nor should she be relied on uh, for the caretaking that the mother uh, should be doing, or if she can't be doing it, should be making arrangements to have others assist her in doing. Uh, but I see also a very high risk to their mental health uh, based on the patterns that I'm seeing both on the video and as a result of the observations of Ms. Harvey and those others that were testified to. The uh, home is in deplorable condition. Uh, that was demonstrated by the photographs as well as a video. Dead bugs, old food, children walking through garbage covering the floors, high school, high chairs covered in old food and dirt. Um, so just a brief review, uh, using Ms. Pamfoot, uh, unfortunately was found to be using uh, triggering behaviors with Michael. Uh, I do fault her for not checking on the youngest child after she was assaulted by uh, the oldest child and choosing instead uh, to have an altercation with the uh, oldest child and relying on the other children to check on the youngest, frankly. Uh, relying on uh, the oldest daughter for parenting, not engaging in services for the children, um, and alienating uh, the rest of the family from being able to step into that gap. So for all those reasons, I do find that there has been a violation of the statute and that adjudication is appropriate. She will be ordered into a case services plan at our next juncture, which will be the initial disposition on December 19th at nine o'clock in the morning. I have been told she's already reviewed the case service plan and signed it. Am I right? She confirms that's accurate. Uh, are you saying you wish uh, the court to enter the initial disposition order today, Mr. Brooks? I do because I want her to get the help she wants and needs. Your position on that, Ms. Thomas? Your Honor, I want to be sensitive to the case that was scheduled for 11 a.m. this morning. Uh, we're about a half hour over. So I would ask that we just hold this in addition, um, in come in conjunction with the review for father. All right, would there be any issue in um, Ms. Harvey or Ms. Grant making those referrals for um, Ms. Foote in the meantime that are recommended by the case services? Mm -hmm. No, Your Honor, we, most of those referrals are already done. That's good. good. Okay, all right, well, uh, I too want to be sensitive to our 11 a.m. I can tell you that our uh, one of our participants has left in prison and uh, I'm sure needs to chat with this attorney. So we'll do our initial disposition on 12, 19, 9 a.m. in conjunction with the first regular review on dad's case. Uh, but I would uh, encourage Ms. Foote to get engaged with those services right away to continue the visitation and we'll review uh, the case on the 19th at night. Any other questions? Yes, could I have the date and time again, please? Yes, December 19th at 9 a.m. In the meantime, the children will remain placed with father uh, with a visitation order uh, and the uh, requirement that Ms. Foote continue to remain out of the home until further progress is made. 